for you. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux on a USB drive and boot any computer laptop from that same USB stick without installing it on your hard drive, without messing up with your hard drive and Windows or dual booting anything. So we need a persistent USB drive and we need a persistent partition of that USB drive because if we install this Kali Linux directly, when we boot it in a, when we boot it from that USB drive, everything would be working amazing fine. But what, when you change some settings and put some files or delete some files or just make some changes in there, these changes will be discarded after restart, reboot, or just shut down or put that USB drive on another computer. Or even that same computer, when you restart, then all data that you save, that you change, would be deleted, would be removed, would be set back to its default. To fix this thing, we also need to create a persistent USB drive so that all of these things which we do, which we save, everything should be there and doesn't go back to its defaults or doesn't discard our data. So that when we ever put in another drive or another computer, sorry, or any other laptop, that data would be there and it would be the same as it was it was before on another computer. The biggest part and the biggest benefit of using Linux is that you don't need to install any of the drivers or anything. So the biggest benefit of it is if we do the same thing with Windows when you put it on another computer, that is not going to work properly because we need drivers for that and that the computer and that USB drive doesn't have those com those drivers that this laptop or this computer has. It has the previous drivers which were present on the previous laptop or computer. So Windows doesn't have this plug and play feature. Windows 11 is improving but it's not as good as Linux and Linux has this feature. So you can, can use this approximately on any computer, on any laptop that you want without worrying about drive installation, software, drivers compatibility, nothing. So for this we need a USB drive at least 8 gigs and I will show you all the procedure with this laptop so let's begin with the video in the computer screen so here we are in our computer so now the first thing we need to do is obviously we need to open up your favorite browser because we need to download a few files first of all we need a live usb iso image file from kali linux and it's very easy to download just type get kali there is it I'll place all of those links in the description so you can click on that and you don't have to search everything in here like I am doing this and it will directly send it to their official website which is this one. If the link doesn't work properly so that you can do the same procedure as I am doing right now here. So now we have to go up it down and virtual machine installer images. We don't want all of these. They are ARM based content. Here is the life. We need this one. Click on this. Scroll down a bit and it depends on you which computer you are using. 64 32 bit and Apple Silicon, but I would recommend to go with 64 bit because 99% of computers in 2023 are all running 64 bit. Even this laptop is running x64 based architecture. Let me show you. Here is it. You can see it's a 64 bit operating system. Here is it x64 based processor? Most of the laptops, literally 99% of computers and laptops all run on x64, 64-bit. The 32-bit is a previous generation when generation architecture and it's no more use. But if your computer is still 32-bit, then you can go with 32-bit, but in our case, it's 64-bit. So just click, there will be torrents, some, but just click download on this one, which says 3.9 GB. And I'm releasing the, I'm downloading the latest release, which is 2023.2. Uh, so you have to click on this download button and then obviously a pop-up will show up that you download it so just save it on your appropriate appropriate your drive path and then here's the name so just click on save to start downloading the second thing we need to do is obviously a software which will do all of our stuff like making persistent memory storage partition and booting this Kali Linux drive and all of the just flashing these Kali Linux ISO files on that so we need to download Rufus click on Rufus 
I will also give the link in the description so you can download from there. Click on this first link obviously. Let me cancel it because I already downloaded it to save our time. Scroll a bit down and then you will see download this. So just click on this first one. Rufus 4.1 exe is a standard Windows X64. If you have again Windows x86, you can select this one. But I have x64, so it's standard portable. Don't download portable because it has a few bugs and everything. So just click on the standard one. It's not installing anything, but it's just downloading and it's ready to start. Just click on save and it will be downloaded as well. So after downloading all of these files, let me show you what to do right after that. So just you have to plug in your USB drive at this point. So let's put in our USB drive. Make sure it's a USB 3.0 and plug in a USB 3.0 port for ultimate speeds because we are loading an entire operating system from that man. So it should be fast because if your computer is fast and your USB drive will be slow. Then you're going to face a lot of slow quitting times and stuff like that, real slow app opening times and everything like that. So just plug in your drive in a 3.0 port. Remember that. So here I let me show you my USB drive in File Explorer. Here this one is 7.22 GB which is approximately equivalent to 8 GB. And don't forget to completely remove and back up all of the files from the USB drive because in this process the entire USB drive is getting formatted and all of the data on that USB drive would be destroyed or deleted in simple words. Now after all the files have been downloaded, open up your file explorer and go to the downloads folder and open up the Rufus software that we just downloaded. <coughs> Click on yes and then our drive or USB would be selected by default if you have other drive then you can select from there make sure to select the right USB drive even if a small mistake in here can remove the entire data from the wrong drive if you have selected so it's better right now to disconnect all other USB drives and just keep using the drive in which you want to install Kali Linux so in my case I have this 7.8 equivalent to 8 GB drive inserted there's no more drive so just click on that drive now click on select to select the disk OI so I made sure that we downloaded for Kali here's that Kali Linux 2030.1 live version which is a 3.88 GB file so let's click on this and click on open so now everything is as it is just change the persistent partition size from 0 no persistence to 2 GB and then click on start and click on ok now click on because I have some more partitions of the same USB drive you might see the same you might not see this if you don't have other partitions but if you have multiple partition you're also going to see this so just click simply click on ok then now it's starting it's now formatting it's now it's being done now you might be thinking that my let me show you if you have ever tried to install and uh, try to create a bootable usb drive you might be familiar with this partition scheme if you have a legacy boot or bios you select mbr and if you have a latest UFI boot you select the GPT and my laptop let me show you is GPT as you can see here it's GPT but why did I then created a MBR partition there's a reason behind this the Kali Linux or Kali Linux doesn't support GPT or latest UFI boot, so we should be stick with MBR. So if you have a UFI laptop or computer, you should also have to select MBR. You can't select a GPT in this case. So now let's move to booting into 
to Kali Linux from our USB drive. Now, what we have to do is we have to close the program, remove the software, and make sure you have plugged in your laptop. If you have a laptop, if you're using a computer, then just shut down your PC. Very simple. Now you have to go to your BIOS. And every laptop, every computer has a different BIOS key. For example, for this particular line of a laptop, it is actually to press F2 for BIOS and F12 for Boot Manager. So first we have to open up into the BIOS to change from our UFI boot to legacy boot so that our USB drive can be booted. Then we have to, after saving that changes, we have to press F12 to go into our boot manager and select our USB drive to boot from that USB drive instead of our traditional or internal hard drive or SSD. So now it's been turned on. So now we have to press the power and turn it on and then press F2 for a couple of times to boot into the BIOS. So now we are in the BIOS. Now what we have to do is we have to go to the boot section or boot tab and to go to the boot tab let me introduce to these four to you these four arrow keys this one is to go up and down then this is to change the depth and we have to change the depth so let's go to this first second and then third which is the boot and then as you can see our boot mode is ufi and we have to press enter to select it and then we have to change it to legacy support or just legacy then press enter again and now it says legacy first and we have to do that so it's boot priority to put UFI first or legacy first. So if we put legacy first, we can then select our USB drive. If we select UFI, then still we can't boot our USB drive because our USB drive is still legacy. So we have to keep on stick with legacy first and then just press uh, F10 in my case to save and exit, which is exit saving changes and then it selected yes and then press enter. Now our laptop is booting up and now we have to press F12 in my case to to go into the boot manager. So I'm keep pressing F12 and now we are in the boot manager. So it's still bo will be booting from the SATA HDD or SSD which is a data access SSD but we have to select the USB HDD which is our Kingston USB drive. Let's go down, select this one and press enter to start booting from the Kali Linux USB drive and here we are in the Kali Linux. So now we have still live system which will not store any of our data and settings which is not good. So we have to go down, down, down with live system with USB persistence means everything would be saved. So we'll just press enter and then for Kali Linux would be good to go for booting. So here we go, Kali Linux booted up from the USB drive. Now there is no interfere with the hard drive means no data is written or deleted from your drive. And here is the full fledged Kali Linux running from the USB drive. If I disconnect the USB drive, turn off my laptop and power it on back again, the laptop will boot normally without any problem. But you all should have to change the boot order, oh sorry, uh, boot from legacy to UFI to because our hard drive is uh, UFI boot. If you have legacy drive, then you have to do nothing about it. Just power on the computer and without USB drive, it would boot up into your Windows or any operating system that you have installed. So here you can see, let's say terminal, let's open up terminal. Here is it, opening terminal from our drive, USB drive. Here is because Linux has this property that it works without any drive installation. Here all the Wi-Fi is working, everything is good. So I hope this video is beneficial for you. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video. If you have any queries or anything, don't forget to comment below. And we will meet you in our next video. Thanks for watching.